Hello and welcome to the Thursday, March 2nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today found a Python script bringing back memories. This Python script steals information from gamers. I remember some of the very early pieces of malware that I've been uh, sort of working on many, many years back that uh, were often referred to as gold farming, where you had attackers stealing virtual goods, for example, from World of Warcraft was the big thing back then. Now, World of Warcraft was also one of the pioneers uh, as a result when it came to two-factor authentication. This script uses uh, Telegram as a command control channel and then essentially searches your system for credentials and other information regarding several games. Minecraft is targeted here, but also the platform Steam, which of course can be used for various other games and uh, other domains and such are being intercepted in order to steal users' data. The exact monetization here isn't quite clear just from the malware itself, but uh, online gaming credentials are valuable. They are being traded and often then again, just like in the old days with World of Warcraft, you may find, for example, virtual goods being removed from accounts or the accounts themselves uh, being used uh, for the status they have in the game. And first, a DNS abuse special interest group came up uh, with an interesting DNS abuse techniques matrix. The document was actually released a while ago. I sort of forgot about it, uh, but was just reminded about it again uh, by a news article. What I find interesting about this document is that it gives you a very thorough list of how a DNS may be abused. They list about uh, 21 techniques and it's attached against, for example, your DNS uh, infrastructure, against Registra, but also uh, the use of DNS, uh, for example, as a command control channel. And then for each one of uh, these uh, threats, they're then listing uh, which particular uh, stakeholders uh, may be affected. So if you're a Registra, if you're an enterprise user and such, so you can kind of uh, get a good comprehensive list of DNS threats that you may have to watch out for, that you may have to consider as you're trying to, for example, defend against uh, these uh, threats. Pretty neat document, uh, not really all too big, so a relatively easy read, but I think a good start if you're trying to sort of narrow down DNS security for your organization. And ESET has a nice comprehensive uh, write-up about Black Lotus. Black Lotus is a UEFI uh, rootkit, a bootkit, also because it sort of uh, runs at boot. The trick with UEFI is that you have a special uh, partition on your disk where this software lives. So strictly speaking, it's not firmware. It's something that you can scan for. The tricky part here with the uh, Black Lotus was that it was validly signed. So it did pass secure boot. Since then, uh, some of these signatures have been added to UFI revocation lists, but of course they may be lacking behind. So it's possible that this attack may still work today. Interesting write up here with a bunch of additional details in a case of compromise or so that uh, may help you sort of get a better handle on this threat. And a little bit along the same lines of uh, these low level attacks, uh, cert.org is warning about a buffer overflow, actually two buffer overflows in the TPM 2.0 reference implementations. TPM, that's the trusted platform module often used as a secure enclave on systems. It holds cryptographic keys and this buffer overflow may allow an attacker to then read cryptographic keys they would otherwise not have access to, also possibly overwrite some of them. As typical for a buffer overflow, it would be used to run the attacker's code and since it runs within the uh, TPM module, it does have out access to all the data that's usually made inaccessible by code running on the module. 
And in other vulnerabilities, we have several vulnerabilities being patched by Aruba in Aruba OS. So that's the Wi-Fi gear created by Aruba. And these vulnerabilities lead all the way up to the unauthenticated command injection. And Cisco also patched a remote code execution flaw in various IP phones that affects the web user interface of these IP phones. This is CVE 2023-20078. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.